Hi there guys, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster, but I also like painting miniatures. So today I'm going to have a look at some of the kits from Victrix Miniatures. And as this is October, um, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the Norman kits that they, um, they have produced. Now I've bought these myself with some of the money that I have got from Patreon. So this is not a sponsored video in any way, uh, but I just wanted to share this with you guys um, and hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I do. Okay, so as a cavalryman and a jouster, it's got to be the Normans really, doesn't it? We're talking the Battle of Hastings. So the options were Norman or Saxon. Uh, I've gone for Norman cavalry and Norman infantry here. Um, I did previously get just a few Saxons from them, which are pretty nice little models. What's quite interesting, and you'll see this when we open some of the packs, is that the helmets are sometimes separate to the rest of the model. So you can have the same model, but you can swap the helmets around. That's a pretty cool idea. So uh, well done Victrix for that. Um, they came with this nice topper and the, uh, the plastic bags, which I've not really seen before. Most of what I've bought in the past have come in boxes. So hopefully the models inside will have been protected well enough. Let's open it up. Here we go. So this is the Norman Cavalry. So you've got one, two, three different horse sprues. And the horses come in two parts. There we are. I don't know if they're interchangeable. They don't look like they are. Um, and they've got the bases attached to them. Can you make that out? So three sprues of horses with different shields as well. And then two sprues of riders. Um, yeah. They've got lots of different head versions, so you can use these for the earlier 1066 style down here, or you can go a bit later um, with some more full face style helmets, such as that. Um, loads of different options for weapons. And that sort of thing. We've got loads of spears, which is good. We've got some javelins. The um, the cavalry at Hastings. A lot of people don't realise this, but the cavalry at Hastings were actually um, very much a skirmishing force. We tend to think of knights as cavalry, as uh, um, just kind of heavy cavalry. Just the only job they had was to break through the lines but that wasn't really done at Hastings so there we go that is the um, the cavalry sprues and then here are the Norman infantry sprues now obviously the dark ages is something that people are trying to get away from but I completely understand not as in they're trying to get away from the Dark Ages, but they're trying to get away from the term, the Dark Ages. But I completely understand why a company would use that term, because that's what people think of. You know, it's still a, a term that's in everyday use. It's a bit like chainmail. This guy here, wearing some lovely chainmail, uh, which any reenactor would tell you is... Um, completely not allowed you're not allowed to call it chain mail because it was only called mail in period but hey that's our language at the moment so 
let's have a look we've got I think that's the command sprues so we've got two command sprues with one two three four five six bodies on each and then we've got the actual soldier sprues which are one two three four five six soldier sprues which have got one two three four five six seven eight soldiers on each of those and there's a good mix of lightly armored so these guys in fact actually i say lightly armored these guys appear to have just tunics on and then you've got these guys with some kind of gambeson or padded jacket on and then you've got some mail chain mail for those of you um who don't stick don't go with the modern reenactor ideal and then just on here i did notice this guy appears to be wearing scale which um there are certain images from the 11th century that do look a lot more like scale armor than um than mail armor um i'm saying scale because mail means net so you can't really have a scale net mail works for chain mail but it doesn't really work for um for scales that i think was a uh, either a victorian or a dungeons and dragons thing to call it scale mail anyway um yeah there are some images that do look like it's the guys are wearing scale and we do know that in the late roman era so uh, a few hundred years before there were people wearing scale um the cavalry guys some of them are wearing scale here as well it was worn in other parts of europe so it would seem right that uh, uh that you might see some of it in William's army, particularly William, who actually, um, his army was basically a group of mercenaries. Um, yes, he obviously had his own household as a duke, um, but he hired a lot of mercenaries to come over, offering them land and riches and a position in his court um, in return for fighting. So the idea that there would be some scale and a variety of different um, weapons and armour in his army is certainly uh, one that holds water. So um, I'm just going to very quickly get one of these horses off of the sprue and let's have a bit of a closer look. I should probably be using clippers for this, but It's okay. We're good. We're good. Either make sure you're cutting away from yourself or cutting onto a mat. Preferably both. I suppose you should probably, <laughs> it shouldn't really be or. Cut away from yourself and where possible onto a mat. So here we go. Here's our horse guy. Um, He's a nice boy, isn't he? So, as is often the case with models like this, um, the cloth part of the saddle, the saddle cloth, is modelled onto the horse, along with most of the tack, except for the stirrups. Now, a lot has been said about stirrups in the early medieval period and how they allowed riders to um, to use a lance in the couched position under their arm now i've seen people in roman saddles use a couch lance extremely well i really don't think that the stirrup has too much of an effect in that because you can see here this is an earlier type of saddle to the ones that um that you usually see in jousting but you can see they've got a high back and this is what really allows a, um, a mounted knight to put as much impact into his blow as possible. 
the stirrup of course hangs down so the impact coming this way isn't going to have too much effect uh, based on the person's um, feet in the stirrups it's the back of the saddle that is going to help with that um, now the reason why I'm saying Roman saddles are just as good is that Roman saddles they weren't completely across the back but they had horns that came out two at the back and two at the front and I'll see if I can find a picture to put on the screen now so um, the Roman saddles were just as good um, for impact however it's uh, um, it's the stirrup was useful it just wasn't really um, the game changer that allowed for couched lances so much um, in fact we see on the Bayer Tapestry there are lots of images of the Norman Knights using overhead grips with their spears um, you know it wasn't the couched cavalry charge that won the Battle of Hastings it was uh, it was a variety of different factors but um, it wasn't just heavy cavalry ploughing through infantry as um, as is often portrayed now let's get this picture get this guy here okay all right so this horse is pretty good scale wise now um one of the things if you've been with my channel for a while you'll know that i've done a few videos on horse size because generally medieval horses were shorter than a lot of people uh, imagine they would often have been called ponies by today's standards i would say that this horse is probably a bit too tall for um for a 11th century war horse um the reason why or one of the main reasons why you wouldn't really want a very tall horse is that you're expected to be able to mount and dismount in the field without any help and if you're wearing um if you're wearing full armor whether that's mail or plate that gets trickier um apart from anything else as well horses just weren't bred to be that tall at that point there's very little in the way of evidence for um for what we would consider horses over uh, 15 hands high which is um, some number <laughs> of uh, uh, centimeters uh, I'm not very good at that kind of maths off the top of my head and in England we still use hands so apologies to anyone in Europe who uh, who uses centimeters like a sensible person um, so the the way that um, yeah this Mm, it's hard to say for sure because this guy's got bent knees the horse has got bent knees i think this horse is probably a bit too tall from a um, historical point of view but actually from a miniature company making miniatures that appeal to the widest number of people um, and to be used in games by people who are um, enjoying themselves rather than aiming for complete historical accuracy i understand why you would go for larger horses because um, people tend to think that the authentic horse size is, is a bit comical just because of um, the way that our minds work we expect a horse of a certain size to go with a rider of a certain size based on what we see nowadays um, whereas those horses just basically didn't exist in the um, in the 11th century well um I <clears throat> well I really like these kits I have been waiting for the mounted knights for a long time um, looking at the sprues I love all of the options that we have here I love the detail really nice detail just yeah just love all the options um, loads of even cool little I think that's called a Phrygian helm. So we've got a nice little, um, yeah, I, maybe I should go into details of this. So, so the Spangenhelm is a, what you consider 
a typical um, Dark Ages helm, for want of a better term, uh, early medieval helm. So it's made up of multiple parts. And a lot of the Norman army appear to have worn helms like this, uh, if we go by the Bayer Tapestry. Um, a lot of them didn't own their own equipment, um, and it was gifted to them by William, so he had lots of it made in a short amount of time to equip his invading force. So this kind of helmet was very, uh, very much a part of the, um, the invasion force that came over. This one here represents a... Um, a more expensive version so it's not made out of separate parts it's raised out of one piece uh, and goes up and then it has the nasal bar if I show you up on this one the nasal bar is attached separately with rivets so um, this is a slightly higher quality version of the same helm um, you don't necessarily a lot of people worry about the amount of open face that you get with these style of helmets and they kind of look at it and think oh, I'd, I'm not keen on that but um, if we look down here here's an example of how it would be worn with um, mail coming up uh, quite quite far underneath there so um, it wasn't always as open as uh, as we would imagine um, then here we have a slightly later version a, a Phrygian style I think it's called which um, has a nice little sweep on it um, I'm not entirely sure the if there's any practical reason for that or if it's just to make it look cooler because it's harder to uh, to make so um, obviously things that are harder to make means that you've spent more money on it paid a paid a better armor so we have a nice little um, kind of history lesson going on there between those three now obviously some medieval people agreed with you if you said the nasal helm leaves you unprotected and unprepared obviously some medieval people agreed with you because they started putting these whole face plates on instead of just uh, having the nasal bar come down and there's a variety of different styles available on this set I really love the historical details on here they Victrix have done really well with this. They give you loads of options and they're all historically plausible. <laughs> uh, the it, When you go back this far, it's very hard to say accurate completely, right? And when, it, when you're talking about uh, models of this size, things like scale, uh, I, until we find an extant piece that we can date specifically to that period we can't say for sure but it's definitely historically plausible um, that a number of people um, in the period would have been wearing scale instead of um, instead of mail um, so we've got a nice nice little kind of grouping here which these different head options actually extend um, the time period that you can use uh, uh, this kit for to a good hundred years or so um, and that's a, a really cool detail you could use these either for William's invading force uh, in 1066 or you could um, push it a bit later and go for a, um, a force in the Crusades and you can see here We've got different options of shields as well. So the round shield is one of the earlier styles, um, which then develops into the kite shield. And then we end up with the flat topped kite coming next. These ones here, I think, are more kind of um, southern France. Um, you don't see those on the Bayer Tapestry. You don't see them so much in uh, England, but... Uh, um, Oh, if you know more about these, then uh, please do let me know, because uh, I'd love to find out more details about that. Loads of different designs for um, daggers and that as well. So again, you've got um, the more typical um, kind of Northern European style going to a more crusader southern european and, and middle east style here 
So really good, really nice kit. Um, if I'm going to be picky, I think I'd rather have fewer mould lines, but I don't think that um, I, it's definitely not as bad as I've seen on some kits um, and easy enough to, to clean, I'm sure. Um, if you'd like to see more of this, then do hit the subscribe button because I think I'm going to be putting some of these together and painting them up. So um, if you want to see that happening, then do subscribe to the channel. And this is the incredibly janky way that I got the overhead shot for that video. Um, I was very paranoid that my camera would slip, uh, but it did okay. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you like this sort of thing, please do leave a like or comment down below. Uh, it's a bit different to what I normally do, so um, if you want to see more of it, please do let me know and uh, we can do that. If you'd like to help support the channel, then sharing this, this content and making sure that you're subscribed is really, really important. But if you'd like to go a bit further, then you can check out the merchandise down below or you can head to Patreon to support me directly. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye.